morning, good morning, church family. How is everyone? Good? Great? Been better? You know why the children of Israel, Rusty, are you in here? You know why the children of Israel had to wander for 40 years? <laughs> so doubt and unbelief would die out. <laughs> Yeah, and faith would survive and go on to the promised land. And I thought that was, that was good what you shared earlier. Let's, let's pray. And let's, let's pray specifically. Let's pray, let's pray specifically that the Lord would speak to us about missions, what to do. How much is support? Amen. The reason that's important is because the devil can't talk you out of what God told you to do. You know, the devil will try to talk you out of what God told you to do. But if you know you heard the Lord, the devil can't talk you out of it. Neither can the economy. All right. <clears throat> Neither can the price of oil. Come on. Because God spoke to you. I'm reminded of the widow who had the oil didn't run out. Right? I mean, it was during the famine. The economy was bad. The price of oil, I'm sure, was high. But her oil didn't run out until she didn't have the containers anymore to contain it. You know? Until, until she didn't have the ability to contain what God was pouring into her. And that's when, it, that's when that provision ceased. And God's supply to us is always based upon the container. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How, how, how much we allow him to pour in so we can pour out. The devil can't talk you out of what God's told you to do when you know you heard the Lord. So when the Lord speaks to you about what to support missions with or how much to support missions, uh, the devil, the economy, whatever you may be going through, it, it just can't talk you out of it. So we really encourage people to hear the Lord on their missions giving. So let's pray. Let's, Lord, we... We thank you that your uh, spirit dwelling in us, your Holy Spirit dwell, dwelling in us, in us makes known your will to us. And we can hear your voice because you desire to speak to your children. May we hear your voice on the amount you would have us to give toward missions this year. Knowing that you will supply what you've told us to give. Because your ability to supply is not based upon the economy. It's not based upon the price of oil or whatever the devil may do and be, be, be doing in our life. Your, your ability and your power to supply is based upon what you said. And you will perform it, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, and let us know what you'd have us give. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's a... A monthly commitment for one year. It ends after a year. So your last year's commitment is just about wound up and you can make a new commitment and that'll be for 2023, every month for 2023. That way our missionaries, they know what's coming in, which is good because we all need to know what's coming in, right? It helps every family in this room to know what's coming in and that gives them a, an amount that they can know. We divide it up between uh, our missionaries, whatever comes in, we just divide it by seven. And then that's what we give. And so, faith speaks. Faith speaks. Can you hear me up there? Faith speaks. In Spanish, la fi habla. La fijabla. Forgive me. I asked uh, Alicia, how do you say faith speaks in Spanish? And that was the best I could do. La fijabla. In Greek, I got this one nailed down. Pistas leo. Pistas leo. Faith speaks. In Hebrew, em onah deba. Em onah deba. 
faith speaks. See, you don't know if I got that right. <laughs> Anyone speaking Spanish know if I blew the other one, but you don't, you guys don't know, but maybe some of you do. Faith speaks. Who speaks the foreign language? Dr. Echo, 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 stand up and say faith speaks in Dutch. Say it again. Hello, faith. Amen. Faith speaks. Who else speaks the foreign language? Other than Spanish or Dutch? Anyone? <laughs> Want to speak in tongues? <laughs> that, we, that we can translate. <laughs> faith speaks. Faith speaks in every dialect. Faith speaks in every tongue. Faith speaks. Faith has a sound to it. And God hears it. Faith has a sound to it. And God hears it. Every language, every dialect. Just like faith looks like something, faith sounds like something. Just like faith looks like something to God, faith sounds like something to God. When we step out in faith, God sees it, right? Abraham stepped out into a land he knew not. He didn't know where he was going or what the outcome would be. But he stepped out and God saw that and identified the father of faith as having faith because of what he saw. Amen? Can you agree with that? The apostle Peter stepped out of the boat onto the waters of the unknown at the command of the Lord. Just like Abraham was commanded by the Lord, God told him to step out into that land not knowing where he would where he would go or what would happen. And Peter stepped out of the boat when Jesus said, come, not knowing what was going to happen. He walked on the water, but God saw it. And we recognize Peter, as does the Lord, as having faith because of what he saw. God sees faith when we step out and do what God's told us to do. We might say faith is only proven when tested. And it's tested when he sees us do what he tells us to do. Anyone ever have your faith tested by God telling you to do something he told you to do? <laughs> oh, yes. Faith is proven when tested. You know, we can say we have faith all day long. All day long. We, I got faith. Oh, yeah, I got faith. But it's only proven when tested. It's tested when God tells us to step out of our boat onto the waters of the unknown. It's tested when God tells us to step out to somewhere we don't know what the outcome's going to be. I'm not talking to you guys, but you guys know what I'm talking about. We step out and we don't know what the outcome's going to be. And God sees that as faith. He sees that as faith. Just like he saw Peter's faith and just like he saw Abraham's faith. So my point is, our faith is tested and proven by what God sees. The question I believe the Holy Spirit would ask us today is, our faith proven and tested by what God hears? Does faith speak? Is our faith proven by the words that come out of our mouth? Is the Lord listening to faith or is he just looking for faith? Let's ponder that question for a moment. The scriptures tell us to ponder. I don't know what pondering looks like, but to me it looks like this. Hmm. <laughs> let's ponder that question. I mean, really, let's, let's just ponder the question for a moment. 
Is, is God listening for faith just like he's looking for faith? Hmm. It's a great question. Ponder it. Let me ask you this. Do, do the words that come out of your mouth sound like faith Or words of fear and doubt and unbelief. What does the Lord hear when he hears us speaking? I include myself in that question because so often I found, find that my, my words are faithless, doubt-filled Sometimes fearful. And I find myself being a miserable failure at faith speech. At faith speaking. So if you feel like I'm pointing a finger at you, I'm pointing three back at me. Are your words words of fear, doubt, and unbelief? Or are they words of faith? Do the conversations you have every day, are they conversations that sound like faith to God or are they conversations that sound like fear, doubt, and unbelief? Everyday conversations about your life, what do they sound like? Everyday conversations about your marriage, your finances, those everyday conversations about your job or your career or your business or your, or your family. Everyday conversations you have with yourself. Conversations you have with God. Conversations you have with other people. Do those conversations sound like faith speech? Or do they sound like something else? I'm going to tip my toe back in here. I've just been stepping all over it up here this morning. I have an assignment for you at the end of service today. Um, for this coming week, it's a week-long assignment. It's going to be very difficult. It's probably the most difficult thing you can do. But it's only for one week. And, and it's not for everybody. It's just for, I need at least 16 people. Because I got 16 faith balls. So I need at least 16. The rest of you can take the challenge. You just won't have faith balls. They're really just a reminder. To help you, but... It's going to be one of the hardest things, but I believe it will transform your life, this challenge. And I believe God will have a response to the challenge, uh, and people will have a response, and the enemies coming against you in your life will have a response. So it'll be very challenging. So uh, I'll get to that in a moment, but faith, in my opinion, is the most challenging word in Scripture. Can you think of a more challenging word in Scripture than faith? Maybe you can. I, I can't. I can't think of a more challenging word than the word faith. Faith challenges our intellect. Faith challenges our belief system. Faith impacts our emotional well-being. Faith controls our thoughts, our attitudes, our actions. Faith confronts us with the challenge of trying to please God with our life. The, the scripture says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Yeah. 
Is, is pleasing God something you want to do with your life? Is that something, well, you know, I want to do that. Well, that requires faith. It's a challenging word. We either love the word or hate the word. Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some of you can understand. We either love the word or we hate the word. We, faint, we find great value in the word or great frustration in the word. Great power or great disappointment. This thing called faith either guides us to God's destination or it keeps us from it. Choice is ours. This thing called faith is tested at every turn of our life. Have you noticed that? The believer who has it is on course. The believer who does not is off course. So we love the word or we hate the word, you know, depending on our, upon our victories or our defeats. <laughs> if you've ever failed miserably at the testing of your faith, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll go back to my original question. Does the Lord hear faith? Does faith speak? Is our faith tested and proven by what God hears? Do you believe that God, do you believe that faith has actions and declarations? I'll declare you, I'll declare this to you. I'll, I'll declare it without shouting. Faith is both seen and heard. Faith is both seen and heard by God. Faith is proven by what God sees, but what God hears as well. And I'll declare to you that the Lord is responding to what he hears. People respond to it, and the devils of the, of the pits of hell re respond to it as well. When they hear faith. So how's your faith? How is your faith doing? Think about it like I was asking about your health. You go, hey, how you feeling? You know, pastor comes to you. Hey, hey, how you been? How you been feeling? You feeling okay? You feeling better? Only I'm saying, how's your faith? How's your faith doing? Or I was asking about your marriage. How how y'all getting along? Are you guys doing okay since our counseling? Or is it, are things better? Only I'm asking, how's your faith doing? How are things going in your family? Think about it like that. Only I'm asking, how's your faith doing? I want you to think about it like the Holy Spirit is asking you the question of how is your faith because he is. How is your faith concerning that stepping out of your boat thing that God told you to do? How is your faith relating, related to that not knowing what the outcome's going to be, but you know God said to do it and trust him. How's your faith concerning those things? So how's your faith? On a scale of 1 to 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being weak, miserable, failing, hardly even there, to, man, I'm a mountain-moving, faith-filled believer. I'm, I'm way, my faith is way up there. Scale of 1 to 10. How's your faith? I want you to write that number down on the tablets of your heart. <clears throat> you can tell how, by the way, you can tell how it's doing by the actions you're taking and the words you're speaking. How's your faith related to those things? Marriage, family, finances, what he's told you to do. How's your faith? You can tell. And so can God by what he hears. So be honest with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Scale of 1 to 10. You ever found yourself in a conversation with the enemies of your soul? A conversation 
or maybe even a conversation with yourself. Scale of one to 10, how's your faith doing? <clears throat> Base it on your conversations. Now write that number down. Like, as I said, write it down. And I'll come back to it later with the challenge I have for some of y'all. I want to help you move the number up. I tell you what, as your pastor, if I can move the number up on your faith level, I've done well. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. If you hear of the word of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and your number moves up, I've done okay. So be honest with yourself. Don't blow me off now. Scale of 1 to 10, relating anything or any area of your life you're believing God for. Marriage, family, finance, job, career, ministry. You say, I'm believing you for this. I'm, I'm leasing my faith for this. How's your faith? One to ten. If I can move it up from a point, point oh oh one to a, maybe a point one, <laughs> or from a seven to a nine, I've done, I've done well. That's my goal. I want to move your faith up. So I have a challenge for some of y'all. It's too hard for the rest of you. Oh, I'm still in the Lord. Lord, is anybody actually going to do this? He said there will be a few. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't answer me. <laughs> he didn't answer me. But I did have 16 balls. <laughs> if I'd had 20 balls, I'd been believing for 20. So let's think about faith speech. Say that with me. Faith speech. Faith speech in our conversations with God. Faith speech in our conversation with people. Faith speech in our conversation with ourselves. Let's think about faith speech. You know why faith speech is so important? Because our words have the power to move mountains. Our speech has the power to move mountains. Jesus said this in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that th those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Faith has the power to remove the obstacles that stand in the way of God's plan and purpose for your life. Stand in the way of God's destiny for your life. His destiny is planned for, the, for your marriage, your finances, your family, your career, your business, whatever area of your life. There is, there's a mountain stands in the way. Faith has the power to move that obstacle out of the way. That's why it's so important. To move the things that stand in the way of God's blessing, his power, his provision, his authority. Faith has the power to move those obstacles out of the way. That is why faith speech is so important. In the 70s, they had a bunch of crazy teachings about name it, claim it, and all this goofiness. It doesn't change the fact that faith speech is powerful and can remove mountains and obstacles that stand in your way because God is listening just like he's looking. He's listening. It's your faith that will get you there, by the way. Faith has, God has a destiny, plan and purpose for your life. Right, Scott? Faith, God has a destiny, a plan and purpose for your life. Right? Right, June? Right? Do we believe that God has a plan and purpose for our life? He created us for a reason. We're not here by chance. We're not the product of slime and time. God has a purpose for us being here. <laughs> Our faith will get us there. Just like it did Abraham. Just like it did Peter. Just like it did Sarah. Just like it did every hero of faith that we can read about in the book of Hebrews. 
So faith spe speech is important because it has the power to move mountains. Now, I want to say something to you. And what I'm going to say to you can only be proven, will only be proven by those who take the challenge at the end of service today. Here it is. The Lord responds to faith speech. The Lord responds to faith speech. Just like he responds to faith in action, he responds to faith that is spoken. Just like when we take the actions to step out of our boat, he responds to things we say. Actions. This verbal action, let me say it like this, this verbal action creates and produces a reaction from the Lord. But I'm going to prove that to you, but I'm only going to be able to prove it to about 16 of you. Well, maybe 50 of you. I don't know. Think about the Lord's response to the Gentile woman in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then Jesus left Galilee and went forth to a region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshiped him. And pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded. Is it right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs, he said? Do you think Jesus already knew what he was going to do, by the way? Do you think Jesus planned on not answering her prayers? Or what's his response based upon what happens next? Because she didn't go away. I believe what he did next was not just a sign to her, but people sitting at the table. Right. Much like people sitting at his table today. Amen. She replied, that's true, Lord, but even the dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter, daughter was instantly healed. The Lord responds to faith speech. There was a reaction from the Lord. Not because of what she did, but because of what she said. Can you see it? She didn't do anything. Everything she did did not produce a reaction. It's when she said something. God hears faith speech. Deliverance was granted to her child because of her faith speech. I'll submit to you, God hears faith because, and, and, it, and it produces a response from him. And I'll submit to you that if, if you're believing God for a child who is oppressed by a demonic spirit, change the way you're speaking. Amen. Let God hear your faith speech. Here's another example. Think about this Roman centurion's faith speech and then how Jesus responded to, to his faith speech in, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. This is New King James Version. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. 
And the centurion answered him and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers unto me. And I say to, to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, by the way, who was his class that day? <laughs> the audience was those who followed. Much like us today. He said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Jesus said, I have not found such faith, not even in Israel, because of what he said. Not because of what he did, but because of what he said. Centurion didn't do anything. His faith speech came from an understanding of authority. That here is the Lord God Almighty in absolute authority over the demonic realm, over all realms. He is in authority, has the power to heal, to deliver. He is in authority. He's in absolute authority. You know where faith speech flows out of us? When we have an understanding of the authority of Christ. And our speech is a reflection of that understanding that God is almighty. He is in control. He is the authority. May it affect what we say. Faith speech. Hmm. May it, may this understanding impact the words coming out of my mouth. Because God's listening. Hmm. The Lord responds to faith speech. Even Jesus had faith speech when he called Lazarus out of the tomb. Remember he called Lazarus out of the tomb? He'd Lazarus been dead three or four days, whatever it was, and Lazarus come forth and he comes out of the, the tomb alive and kicking. Well, wait a minute, that was Jesus, so that was God. Yeah, but Jesus only did what he heard the Father do and say what they heard the Father say, right? So he heard the Father. He saw what the Father was doing in the life before the crowd who had gathered in front of a dead man, and he began to speak. Well, it was Jesus. Well, don't we hear what the Father says through his word? Don't we hear what the Lord is saying when he speaks to us? Don't we hear what the Holy Spirit is saying when he speaks to us? And do we not speak forth what the word of God says? Is not our Father speaking to us through the Word of God? Is not the Holy Spirit speaking to us by His power of the Spirit? And don't we respond or should we not respond with the words of our Lord when He speaks to us? Faith speaks. Oh, that I would sound more like my Father. Oh, that I would sound more like the Holy Spirit when I'm speaking. Our conversations should sound like the Word of God speaking, and when they do, God responds. You know, when we start looking... Uh, we can see faith speech in the Old and New Testament. We, we just see, if we really start looking for faith speech, we can really see it. And we can see how, it, uh, how God responds to it. We can see how, what it produces when we see it in the Old and New Testament. Um, Jesus, when he's speaking to, to, to Peter, his, when he was saying, who do men say I am? Peter's response was faith speech. Listen to this. Matthew 16, 15. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Jesus talking to his disciples. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed 
or you, Simon Barjona, not for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Who spoke to him? God the Father in heaven answered the question, who is this? Who is this God? Well, this is Christ. But my Father in heaven, who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and wherever you bind, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The Lord's response to Peter's faith speech was to build his church on that belief, on that revelation, or that understanding. I'm going to build my church on that, what you believe about me. That's what Jesus is saying to me. God told you that. I'm going to build a church on it. The gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. Whatever you bind is going to be bound, whatever you say. Whatever you loose. What Peter believed in his heart came out of his mouth. This revelation of, of what God spoke to him came out of his mouth. What's God been speaking to you? What's God been speaking to you about stepping out to a land you know not? What's God been speaking to you about stepping out of the boat and out of your comfort zone, onto the waters of the unknown? What's God speaking to you about your marriage or your finances or your family or your... What is he speaking to you? Jesus built the whole church on what Peter believed in his heart. His response, I'm going to build a church on that. And it's still built to this very day, by the way. Scripture says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We can tell by what we believe, by what our words say. We can tell by what we believe, by what we hear come out of our mouth and so can God Amen. at the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks Hebrews 11 one says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen does that not relate to the things that we believe in our heart substance and hope does that not relate to the things we believe in our heart it's not the heart a ref is not our words a reflection? Are, are they not a reflection of what's in our heart, the things we believe? Do not these words reflect that like a mirror reflects our outside image? Does not our heart bring a, be a reflection? Is it not a mirror? Is, is our words not a mirror of, what is, of a reflection of what's down in us? Amen. It is. Amen. You stare at a mirror, you see what you look like. Your words are a reflection of what's in your heart. And God stares at it. And he sees. And he hears. Faith. Now, the point is, we see faith speech without, throughout the whole Old, Old Testament and the New Testament and and it brings a response from God. That's my point. Walk out of here with that. It brings a response from God. David's words to Goliath, were they not? <laughs> they were not words of fear and doubt. They were words of faith. It was faith speech, what he said to Goliath. Remember that? 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you. Who delivered, who delivered Goliath into the hand of David? The Lord. Was he just a good shot with his sling? No. The Lord. The Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you, and this day I will give the, carcass, uh, give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Now that's faith speech. He knows how to talk to his giants. 
I wonder if we're facing some giants that we need to learn a new vocabulary to. <laughs> what was the Lord's response? He wasn't just a good shot. He delivered the giant into David's hand. But it was David that made the faith declaration. And God just responded to it. If he had gone through, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh, look at the size of that giant. Whoa, hey. Uh, uh, uh. This thing's too big for me. It's too problematic. That giant's armor weighs twice as much as I do. He could have said a whole bunch of things to that giant, like we do, or the giant could have heard faith speech. You think God would have responded with victory over the giant without David's faith speech? Maybe. So much of the book of Psalms is King David making declarations of who God is and what he can do, declarations of God's power, declarations of God's promises. He, so much of what he said to, to himself, what he said to other people, what he said to God were declarations of, of, of faith. It was faith speech. If you ever read the book of Psalms, you can, you can see it. You can see it all through the book of Psalms. This is David having conversations that are engaged in faith speech. Sometimes doubt and unbelief, sometimes fear, but so often faith speech. I'm going to recommend a little book to you. Someone gave this to me. I hadn't read all of it, but I read enough of it to know that it really impacts our speech. It's called uh, Heaven's Power, De decree Decrees That Unlock Heaven's Power by Tommy and Miriam Evans. Really good little book. It's kind of like a daily read, like a little daily devotional, but it helps you Think about what you're saying. I want to encourage you to read it. Amen. Now, let me finish up with this. You won't believe this. I'm going to finish on time today. I'm supposed to say, I'll believe that with you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Have you ever considered how our speech sounds to the God who dwells in our temple? Well, to the God whose temple we are because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The sounds of the temple. Have you ever considered the sounds of the temple? What God hears in our conversations coming out of our temple or in our temple when we're talking to him. So, so often we think about how our actions look before God, you know, the things we do, maybe our thoughts or attitudes. Oh, I thought this bad thing. I thought that bad thing. We think about how our actions look to God in our temple. We think about the attitudes we have to God in our temple. But do we think about the words that we speak in the temple and how it sounds to the God whose temple we are? For example, speaking to your teenagers. Don't drive too fast. You're going to have a wreck. Speed kills. Don't drive too fast. Don't hang out with those people. Those people will pull you down. You know, evil company corrupts good habits. Don't be hanging out with those bad, those bad friends. I don't want you hanging out with those bad friends. Those are true statements. Evil company does corrupt good habits. And speed is bad and shouldn't be, you shouldn't speed. But can you, th can you imagine how that sounds in the temple? What if it sounded like words of faith? Hey, teenager, the Lord is going to give you wisdom about who to hang out with. God's going to keep you safe as you drive 
and give you real discernment if you start driving too fast. Can you hear the difference? Can you hear the sounds of the temple? Hmm. What do our words sound like to our children of any age? You know, do, do our words sound like declarations of faith and declarations of the promises? Or do they sound like fear, doubt, and unbelief? Because God hears and God responds to faith. What about speaking to your spouse? <laughs> Karen's not here today. <laughs> what about she's watching online? I love you, sweetie. Hope you get feeling better. <laughs> what about speaking to your spouse? Do those conversations sound like faith speech or something else? I do this all the time. Now, you be real careful when you go down to Walmart. You got to be very aware of your circumstances situated down around Walmart. There's all those Mart maniacs and mall monsters down there. You got to be careful. You understand me, Karen? <laughs> what if they sounded like the Lord is going to protect you wherever you go? <laughs> the Lord is going to keep you safe, and he's going to put angels round about you, and they can defeat any mall monster down there. I just know it. You see, you see the difference? You see, can you hear the sounds in the temple? Like when you're speaking, uh, wives, when you're speaking to your husband who has a tendency to get a little road rage and you say things, that anger is going to get you in trouble. That road rage is going to get you in big, big trouble. Well, the truth is maybe that road rage will get you in trouble. Maybe that that anger will get your husband in trouble. Real possible these days they can get you shot up <laughs> driving down the road. <laughs> but what if the words sounded like, the Lord's going to give you patient, patience and peace as you drive to work today in that bad traffic. God's going to get you there safely. Can you hear the difference? Can you hear the difference? Wives, husbands, mothers and fathers, God hears us speaking and he responds to words of faith. Mm. How about your health? Any faith speech relating to your health? <laughs> if you don't stop eating that, it's going to make you sick. It's going to kill you early. That's greasy food. All those sodas going to make your teeth fall out for sure. <laughs> well, the truth is those, those sodas <laughs> may cause your teeth to fall out. All that greasy food may put you in an early grade. But maybe faith speech has the power to keep you from a pre premature death. May the Lord make you strong and healthy and have good choices what you put in your body. And me too. May you find wisdom today in, in, uh, in everything you're eating today and drinking. May the Lord give you discernment. You see, you see the difference? I think you're tracking with me. Hmm. So what if our faith speech didn't sound so much like condemnation and criticism and judgment? What if it sounded more like faith to God? Work speech. Mm. My boss is so unfair and so mean, and all the people I work with are a bunch of turkeys. Well, they may be a bunch of turkeys, and they may be mean, and the boss may be mean, and maybe you do get overlooked. Well, I got overlooked. What, is, what if your speech sounded like, God, thank you for supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you for the provision of this job. May I be the light that shines in this dark place. What if your speech sounded like that? And lastly, what about conversations with yourself? You ever have a conversation with yourself? You ever call yourself bad names? You ever beat yourself up because of a bad decision? That's the stupidest thing you could have done. I can't believe you're so stupid. You ever cuss yourself out? No. <laughs> 
what, what if we started calling ourselves the names God calls us? What if we said something like, God can work all my stupid things to the good. <laughs> all my stupid decisions, he can work out for my good. Because he works all things together for my good. Because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. What if I call myself what he calls me, son? Or he calls you daughter? A priest, a king? What if we called ourselves those names? How do those conversations go about politics? How does that sound in the temple? Do they sound like faith speech? What do your conversations sound like when you're speaking about your finances? Do they sound like faith speech? What if our, our conversations sounded like God's promises to us that we have with people, that we have God, and that we have with the enemy? So you get, you get my point. Worship team, come up here, please. Now, I have a challenge, and anybody on the worship team can take the challenge, too. Um, you ready for it? Y'all listen up as you're walking up here. <clears throat> the challenge I have for you, those of you that are willing to take the challenge, I just, just be honest with me. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're not willing to take the challenge, don't take it. But if you're willing to take it, I want to give you a, a faith ball. <clears throat> so... This is a reminder. <clears throat> the challenge is this, to let faith speak. This week, for one week only, I hope it could turn into more, but this, I'm, this is the challenge, is a one-week challenge. Hopefully it's a lifetime challenge. But I challenge you to have faith speech this week. I challenge you to consider before you speak, is it faith speech? Are the words that are about to come out of my mouth, the conversations I'm about to have with whoever, wherever, whatever, are they conversations of faith speech? Do they sound like faith speech from the temple? One week challenge. Now, if you take the challenge, I want you to write your number down on the ball. There's a pen in the back seat. Whatever that faith number was earlier, I asked you to be honest and say, what was your faith number? Was it a 1.5 or an 8 or a 9? My goal is to bring up your number. I got 16 balls. Who'll take the challenge? Don't drop the ball. <laughs> if you don't get a ball, don't drop the ball. The ball's in your court. The faith ball's in your court. <laughs> okay. Way back in the back. <laughs> Oh, well, stronger than I thought. Who else? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to run out quick. This is good. Zena. Way back there in the back. All right. Oh, that was a good one. Nico. Whoa. Nico, there's one. <laughs> oh. Faith speech. There's another one. I got two left. Okay. Oh, right here. Okay, Brenda. All right. Write the number down on the ball. And for one week, don't drop the ball. Hear me now. For one week, don't drop the ball. If you drop the ball, start over. If you drop the ball, don't worry about it. Just start over. If you didn't get a ball, you can still take the challenge. Because you got that number in your head, right? My goal is to bring that number up. Now, listen to me. Last part of the challenge. If God responds to you in an incredible way because of your faith, I want to hear about it. If you can say, I don't know how this happened. I don't know what made the difference, but God did this this week in my life according to my faith speech. I want to hear about it. Okay? You can do it on our church Facebook page or just tell me in person or send me a text. Faith speech. Let's stand to our feet.
Well, if you ought to have more faith, I'd have finished on time. I'm still a little bit early, but we'd like to close our service with a song and with praying for people. Have my prayer team come up here. If you need prayer for anything today, anyone online, if you need prayer, be sure and contact our Facebook page, contact the office, call our number and say, I just need prayer. Let us know if you need prayer. We, we believe in praying. Zena was praying this morning for a visitor. She said, Lord, let them not see a building. Let them see a body. I thought that's so good. I pray that people that come in today will not see a building they're coming to, but they'll see a body of believers willing to pray for them and encourage them. Amen. So I want to, if you need prayer for anything, Rusty, close us, close us out.